Hey, wonderful souls, this is Nirmal Arcot, your companion on this incredible journey of self-discovery. Imagine we are on a road trip through the landscapes of overcoming shame and fears. And guess what our roadmap is? It's from the inspiring book, Healing the Shame That Binds You by John Bradshaw. Now, picture this podcast as cozy car ride where I'll not only share words from the inspiring books, but also take you along the twists and turns of my own expedition. Think me as your friendly guide, navigating the twists and turns of both the physical and mental terrains. These words are the threads that bind you and me in this transformative process. We are all fellow travelers here, each carrying our unique baggage. Together, Let's unpack, lighten the load, and embrace the freedom that comes with shredding the layers of shame and fear. So, buckle up, wanderers. We are in for an adventure, where we celebrate victories, learn from detours, and support each other on this quest for a more genuine and joyful existence. Before we begin, I would like to open up about my feelings of shame and fear. In the process of creating this audio recording, I grappled with my biggest fear and shame. I recorded it numerous times only to delete most attempts. I am self-conscious about my voice, my accent, what others might think. Totally I was drowning with embarrassment in this process. But there is ones that survived like this recording has already got posted. Despite these challenges, I am determined to make progress and I invite you to join me on this journey. Please stay with me until the end as we drive through this together. The many faces of shame. Shame is difficult to define. It is a healthy human power which can become a true sickness of the soul. There are two forms of shame, nourishing shame and toxic life-destroying shame. As toxic shame, it is an excruciatingly internal experience of unexpected exposure. It is a deep cut felt primarily from the inside. It divides us from ourselves and from others. In toxic shame, We disowe ourselves, and this disowing demands a cover-up. Toxic shame parades in many grabs and get-ups. It loves darkness and secretiveness. It is a dark secret aspect of shame which has evaded our study. Because toxic shame stays in hiding and covers itself up, we have to track it down by learning to recognize its many faces and its many distracting behavioral corrupts. Shame as permission to be human. What our healthy feeling of shame does is let us know that we are limited. It tells us that to be human is to be limited. Actually, we humans are essentially limited. We are by definition limited. Not one of us has or can ever have unlimited power. The unlimited power that many modern gurus offer us is false hope. Their programs calling us to unlimited power have made them rich, not us. They touch our false selves and tap our toxic shame. We humans are finite. Limitations is our essential nature. Grave problems results from refusing to accept our limits. Healthy shame is an emotion which signals us about our limits. Like all emotions, healthy shame is an energy in motion. Like all emotions, it moves us to get our basic needs met. One of our basic needs is structure. We ensure our structure by developing a boundary system within which we safely operate. Structure gives us life form boundaries and form offer us safety and allow a more efficient use of energy. There is an old joke 
about the man who got on his horse and rode off in all directions. Similar to the man, I too found myself riding in all directions. I have a deep love for horses and my first riding experience took place at my friend's Yessi's ranch. Yessi is an incredible and strong woman who takes care of 43 horses, 12 dogs, I think around 6 or 8 cats, as well as a couple of hens and ducks. The ranch belongs to a Mexican rancho community known for their heart and bravery. On this particular occasion, Essie generously offered me the opportunity to ride one of her horses named Corazon, meaning heart in Spanish. Corazon is a beautiful brown horse with a distinctive white heart-shaped patch on top of his head. Following the instructions of the jockey Louis, I mounted the horse and after a few minutes gained enough confidence to ride in all directions with immense joy, excitement and happiness. A short while later, Yesi, with a loud voice, instructed me to ride in her direction. She then proceeded to set up large garbage bins in a line with 5 feet gap between them. With the determination, she asked me to ride between the bins in a straight line. This particular experience of riding between the bins taught me a valuable lesson that directing your skills toward a specific goal can lead to progress. Despite this insightful lesson, I must admit that I have not fully implemented it in my life. I find myself still riding in all directions. However, I recognize that acknowledging the need for direction is the first step towards making positive changes. Without boundaries, we have no limits and easily get confused. We go this way and that, wasting a lot of energy. We lose our way. We become addicted because we don't know when to stop. We don't know how to say no. Healthy shame keeps us grounded. It is a yellow light warning us that we are essentially limited. Healthy shame is a basic metaphysical boundary for human beings. It is the emotional energy which signals us that we are not God, that we have made and will make mistakes, that we need help. Healthy shame gives us permission to be human. Healthy shame is part of every human's personal power. It allows us to know our limits and thus to use our energy more effectively. We have better direction when we know our limits. We do not waste ourselves on goals we cannot reach or on things we cannot change. Healthy shame allows our energy to be integrated rather than diffused. Shame as embarrassment and blushing. In an embarrassing situation, one is caught off guard. One is exposed when one is not ready to be exposed. One feels unable to cope with some situation in the presence of others, it may be an unexpected physical clumsiness, an interpersonal sensitivity or a breach of etiquette. In such situations, we experience the blush that accompanies the feeling of healthy shame. Blushing manifests the exposure, the unexpectedness, the involuntary nature of shame. Once feeling is involuntarily exposed, one is uncovered. Blushing is the manifestation of our human limits. The ability to blush is a metaphor of our essential limited humanity. With blushing comes the impulse to cover one's face, bury one's face, save face or sink into the ground. With blushing, we know we've made a mistake. Why would we have such a capacity if mistakes were not part of our essential nature? Blushing as a manifestation of the healthy feeling of shame keeps us grounded. It reminds us of our core human boundary. It is a signal for us not to get carried away with our own excellence. Shame as shyness. Shyness is a natural boundary which guards us from being exposed or wounded by a stranger. Many of us feel shy when we are faced with the prospect of walking up to a stranger. 
we feel self conscious we stammer in speech or speak in awkward manner this may trigger embarrassment contained in the experience of shyness in the healthy feeling of shame of reluctant to expose oneself yeah i don't like to be exposed either i always feel self conscious when faced with strangers there was a particular instance when i was going through a tough phase in life while living in india i desperately needed to find a job and had an interview scheduled at 10 am i arrived at 9:58 and entered the corporate office upon stepping into the waiting room and seeing several unfamiliar strangers faces including the friend desk stranger strangers walking from inside and i immediately felt out of place overcome with shyness and embarrassment i convinced myself that i must be on the wrong floor without making an attempt or even explaining my situation i simply walked out the stranger by definition is one who is unfamiliar the stranger is not of our family the stranger poses the threat of the unknown our shyness is our healthy shame in the presence of a stranger like all emotions shyness signals us to be cautious to take heed least we be wounded or exposed shyness is a boundary which guards our inner core in the presence of the unfamiliar stranger shyness can become a serious problem when it is rooted in toxic shame shame as the basic need for community there is an ancient proverb which states one man is no man the saying underscores our basic human need for community which underscores our need for relationships our need for social life no one of us could have made it without someone being there for us we human beings need help no one of us is so strong that he does not need love intimacy and dialogue in community at birth we are symbiotically bonded to our mother we are we before we are i a great deal depends on that source relationship after a year and a half of establishing the bond of mutual trust we start to move out to test our autonomy we need a sense of shame to remind us of our limits we need our shame and doubt to balance our newly found autonomy we will need our parents for another decade before we are ready to leave home we cannot get our needs met without depending on our primary caregivers our healthy feeling of shame is there to remind us that we need help we cannot make it alone no human beings can even after we have achieved some sense of mastery even when we are independent we will still have needs we will need to love and grow we will need to care for another and we will need to be needed our shame functions as a healthy signal that we need help and that we need to love and be in caring relationships with others without the healthy signal of shame we would not be in touch with our codependency needs i really take this moment to express my gratitude to each and every person i have met in my life who has offered help and supported on my journey thus far and beyond without any one of you i wouldn't be where i am today i acknowledge my dependence on each individual and the relationships i share with you provide me with a profound sense of purpose thank you thank you my friends shame as a source of spirituality abraham maslow the pioneer third force psychologist once wrote the spiritual life is part of the human essence it is a defining characteristic of human nature without which human nature is not full human nature what is spirituality i believe it has to do with our lifestyle i believe that life is ever unfolding and growing so spirituality is about expansion and growth it is about love truth goodness beauty giving and caring spirituality is about wholeness and completion 
Spirituality is our ultimate human need. It pushes us to transcend ourselves and to become grounded in the ultimate source of reality. Most call that source God. Our healthy shame is essential as the ground of our spirituality by signaling us of our essential limitations. Our healthy shame lets us know that we are not God. Our healthy shame points us in the direction of some larger meaning. It lets us know that there is something or someone greater than ourselves. Our healthy shame is the psychological ground of our humility. Thank you to everyone who has been listening until now. Please take the next few moments, watch straight ahead, feel the warmth in the car, listen to the audio and focus on both your healthy shame and toxic shame and start expressing with gratitude. It can be as simple as appreciating the taste in your mouth like the morning coffee you had or the favorite dish you just made and about to enjoy. Any expression of gratitude will help keep you grounded and connected. Goodbye. Take care now.